when you think about all those things, um, whether it's you know robots that become more capable and then start interacting with humans, or you think about the recommender systems that are already at very large scale interacting with humans every day. Um, how in your mind to extrapolate that? You know, what, what do you see in the next five to 10 years? Wh where are we as humans going to be interacting with robots and AIs the most, you think? It's a tough question. Um, I think it, it seems like it's going to be ubiquitous. It seems like you're going to write in robots and uh, you might have robot assistants at work and you might have robots in hospitals. Um, in fact, uh, my dad just went through a surgery and it was with the Da Vinci robot, which is not really quite automated yet. There was, you know, a surgeon did everything. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but you, you would definitely expect that 20 years from now, we're going to be in a different, different setup with that. And perhaps we're going to make these uh, medical interventions better. Maybe we're going to be able to provide some, some decision support for treatments and diagnostics and so on. Um, I think one one future that that i'm, I'm going to talk about because i think it's basically 20 years plus <laughs> okay. um, but i'm very excited about is um has to do more with the sort of neurology and neuroscience side hmm. um so there's there's this one very sci-fi like projects that i'm involved in and it's a collaboration with both ucsf neurology karnesh ganguly and with um, Raj Rao at, uh, at the University of Washington. And it's on this idea of co-processors. So this is AI used for um, stimulating electrical stimulation of your brain, not of your brain, but it, uh, for patients who have had a stroke. So there's part of their brain is damaged and no longer functions in the correct way, even after recovery, right? So they recover some and they get some of their function back. But, the, but there's a part that's still still damaged and functioning incorrectly, uh, which means that, for instance, as they're, as they're trying to do these simple things like reaching for a bottle, right? Their, their, their arm and their hand no longer works in the way that they're, they're sort of wishing, like they're commanding it to. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the idea with the coprocessors would be that not only can you take readouts from the brain at, as we do with, with brain machine interfaces, mm -hmm. but you can actually do some amount of stimulating electrical stimulation on the brain. And over time, the hope is that you could learn to do this such that this coprocessor is through its actions, it's F effectively compensating for the, um, the damage that the stroke did. And overall, the person is trying to think about, you know, controlling their arm. And instead of, um, you know, due to the stroke, their arms sort of going not where they're want wanting it to, it just functions in kind of close to the same way as um, uh, the uninjured brain functions. So... Oh. It's crazy. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, uh, but yeah, the idea would be that that you, you start off with something open loop, um, you know, some very simple policy that maybe helps a little bit. But then over time, you're learning from the person actually trying to do this this task um, or various tasks how how to take actions on the brain, how to provide these stimulations, so that you end up with with um, success. Um, there's many interesting questions there, but one, one thing that really amazed me is that as sci-fi as this sounds, in Karanesh's lab, they've tried this um, with a very simple system mm -hmm. that is not yet doing reinforcement learning or anything complicated, but, um, but basically they've looked at injured brains uh, in uh, primates and uh, right after the stroke, um, they, you know, they have a hard time reaching for something and collecting a pellet um, that they're getting. And they've noticed that what happens in the brain is that normally there's a sort of a sequence of regions that fires in sequence. Mm -hmm. And that sequentiality is kind of broken by the stroke. So they kind of fire, they, they're now offshoot from each other. Mm 
And so they figured out a way to stimulate the brain sort of globally um, that almost kind of helps reset this clock. So kind of it's a it's a regular, it's a frequency um, that that helps sort of set this kind of I don't know, internal blank clock, so to say, that uh, then ends up making these sequences actually fire at the right times. And then when you look at the reach, it's just, it's, it's just like a normal, okay, I just go and grab this thing as opposed to trying and, you know, being, having a really hard time. And it's just, it's amazing. I mean, there's a long way to go, but it's kind of a proof of concept that, that if you ask me 20 years, I think that there might be things that we could actually do in 20 years on this that, that are helpful.